cookies. Hundreds of nipples, like hill nipples. Like, look. This is bringing it this all is back. Iconic. It's pre-warning. There's a fair bit of todger in there. Welcome to another day and another vlog where I've definitely put us on the wrong way. The Johann Strauss Orchestra. Oh, of course it is. But I'm starting to think that in 2024, that could be something that I do on a regular basis is playing classic FM as soon as I wake up at a stupid hour in the morning because it is a nice way to start the day. And also, I believe if a song is over 100 years old, it's copyright free. We'll find out in this vlog whether I get copyright striked or not for that bit of music. Um, but I'm sure I read somewhere that if a song is over 100 years old, then you're allowed to use it as much as you want. I could be wrong, I could be right, I'm not too sure, but it'd be nice. And if that is the case, then I'll be using um, a lot more classical music in my vlogs. And it's quite relaxing. Oh no, don't you just hate it when your girlfriend melts? Come on, Dot, get up. We've got stuff to do, huh? Oh, thank God. I thought you melted. What do you mean? What are you doing? I'm putting on a little incense burner. Oh, you're really setting an ambiance. Yeah, when you put the music on, you actually set the scene. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> oh, it's getting light outside, which is good. There's, I saw that, I noticed the moon's still up that side. Really? Yeah, have a look. How on earth do you see the moon when it's, there's, it's literally thick cloud? Did you not see? It's like in the car park. No, I. Oh, oh yeah! She's not wrong, you know. The moon is out. I thought it was this light that she was looking at and thinking, yeah, that's not the moon dot. Turns out, she is right. The red bag, Andrew. Andrew's gonna laugh. Do you know what? I think a lot of people are gonna laugh because even like my mates are like, why does Diane wear this? This thing. I normally have a lanyard. Yeah, that's what this I mean. This is my new lanyard. <laughs> what, what am I wearing? Look yeah. at me. <laughs> Got a Christmas bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a better look than melted, Diane. Because I'm pretty sure this is in fact mine. Yes. Oh, it's a sad day when you go from wheat bix to wheat ubix. The British version. I'm gonna say it now. Not as good as Wheat Bix in Australia. Just, it's so hard to like actually get these out without making an incredible amount of mess. I'm reunited with Sergei. Got me bike. It's now time to head to the train station, then go to the airport. Have I packed everything? Probably not. I'm going to one of those five places. Take your bets as to which one it is. And if you guessed Inverness Airport, you'd be right. I'm in Inverness. Editing Joe Suck to tell you that I didn't film anything in Scotland. I was in Inverness for a stag do for a friend of mine. Um, it was a stag do and I just, yeah, I just didn't film anything. But I had a really nice time. It was seeing a lot of friends I haven't seen. Some of them actually since sixth form, so it was really nice to catch up with those guys. But anyway, uh, moving on with the vlog now, on to the next bit. Enjoy. Since we've come back from Australia, we have a slight dilemma. And that dilemma being this thing right here, the sauna. Now, as I mentioned, Diane bought this sauna. It's her pride and joy. Um, she absolutely loves it. And when we got back from Australia, Diane, the first thing Diane said was, oh, I'm gonna go have a sauna. Um, and the lights work, but, that's not what actually heats you up. What heats you up is this thing right here. This little uh, control panel is supposed to turn on and it's completely dead. Every now and then it does work and it starts to actually heat up the sauna, which is these panels here, because it's an infrared sauna. So these heat up for a little bit, but then after like two minutes, they cut out, um, which means, and this still works as well. This has still got life to it. So that still works, the lights still work. It's this and the heating element of this. The most important bit, basically, of the sauna is not working. Now, I've checked the power. I've tried changing the fuse inside here, which is obviously the power off and on switch for the sauna. I've changed the fuse, thinking it might be a fuse issue. It's not, it's definitely not a fuse issue. So what I'm gonna have to do is turn this off, which should then mean that these lights definitely don't work. Yes. Okay, so the thing is definitely powered down. Pa oh! I saw that. How's that working? But now that it's powered down, it means that what I need to do is essentially take this out, 
take these off. Apparently these just come off, which I did not realize was a thing. Yeah, look, they actually come off quite relatively easy. So I've got to take these off. Oh my God. So that's what's behind it. So I take all these panels off. Then underneath here, I should be able to unscrew and take this bench out, bring it out of the sauna and then access a panel underneath this bench, which takes me to a the control box basically. And if the control box has lights off on it or something like that, then it means that it's broken, that needs replacing. Although they say remove the bench, but I genuinely reckon I can take off this hatch and remove it out without actually having to take this out because I'm so small. I reckon I can lie underneath there and take it off without having to do all this malarkey. Oh my God, this whole floor is like an actual ice rink. By the way, we've had some snow. When I say snow, we've had a fair bit of snow. Look at this. Also, where the bloody hell has that come from? It's one thing after another. This light is also dead, uh, which I think I need to access this box to get this work in. It's all, everything's, everything's broke. I've come home and everything's broken. So I'm going to need a flathead screwdriver and an ordinary, an ordinary Phillips. I'll take this one as well, just in case. And let's not slip over and let's hope that this Yes! Yes! Success! Now I'm wondering, as I walk into the sauna disco, what's going on here? I'm wondering if by some like random chance, by me fixing that light and tripping that switch back on and sorting all those, light, sorting all those lights out, will that magically make the sauna work? Is it on the same circuit? I'm not, an, I'm not an electrician. I don't know, but fingers crossed. Turn on. <gasps> There's no way. Surely there's no way that that has fixed this. In saying that, this has happened before and it starts to heat up, then it fails again. So I'm not gonna hold my breath. No, I spoke too soon. We've lost it. Screen's gone, heat's gone. So I'm gonna unscrew this and take this panel off and just find out what exactly is going on. Right, one sauna fixed. <laughs> Turns out all I had to do was what I thought was going to be very, very expensive. Basically the brain of it broken down there. Turns out this just needed a, the, the tablet, the tablet itself just needed a factory reset um, and then reinstall, basically log back in, do all that kind of stuff. Jobs are good and we are back online. But I tell you what, it's so hot in this room. We don't even need this sauna on. I'm already sweating. So much so that I've got the vest on. Now, for those that were really looking forward to the, the advent calendar of whiskey that I received at the start of Vlogmas, um, obviously, I, I think I reviewed four, four whiskeys. Um, other than that, I just I was either not at home or didn't have time or I didn't, you know, I just didn't get around to doing it. So uh, when I came back from Australia, I uh, unboxed the rest of them, basically. And I didn't know what to do with them. I didn't want to necessarily drink them all uh, in one go, or that would have been quite a funny vlog to be fair. Uh, so instead, what I've done with the remaining 20 um, drams of whiskey is this. I did drink them all. No, I'm kidding. I got this as a present from Diane. It's a decanter basically, but what I've done, I've put every single dram in this. You've got, it comes like a little funnel that you can then pop in the top. You then funnel the whiskey in there. Um, and it already had a mixture of a few different whiskies, but now it has all 20 remaining whiskies all mixed into one, into one big mixture. And the reason for doing that is actually the company that sent me the whiskey calendar, I saw on their social media, they've got like a giant, basically a giant version of that in their office where they, when they do whiskey tasting or get new whiskies in, they always pour a little tiny bit into this big, basic cauldron of whiskey um to let all the flavors and the different whiskies fuse together to create a unique whiskey and that's exactly what i'm doing there i'm putting them all in there and it's pretty full i couldn't put any more in there i don't think if i tried i think it would start to overflow but i'm going to let them all just is marinade the right word we're going to go with that i'm going to let them all marinate together and then one day let it 
age a bit in there, let it all just infuse together. And then one day when somebody's feeling brave enough, probably not me, I don't want to be the guinea pig for my own experiment. Oh, and I've just noticed we've still got celebrations left. Oh, who's done that? What sick individual has done that? I hate it when that happens. No, 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 no. If you eat a chocolate and you unwrap it, don't put your empty wrapper back in the freaking tub. Put it in your pocket and find it in your own time when you get home afterwards, after the party. Because then it confuses people. I mean, we can never realize how many bounties are actually left. Why do people, I don't, I, I still don't quite understand the the dislike for bounties. I think I think it's unnecessary. Ah, there's another one staring right at, there's two actually staring right at me that are way worse than bounties. And I'll tell you what those are. In last place, right, is this. Milky Way, more like no way. Get out. And then second worst of that, I'm sorry, Mars bars. I do think heroes. Ah! Because look, these the ones that get left behind in a Cadbury's heroes is eclairs because they're just tough and take a while to get through. But after the parties are finished, they are right then. I actually think fudge was the worst, but it's grown on me. But heroes seem to have also gone down better than the celebrations. Although, what about these? Oh my God, yeah, no, no. That is a, that is a feeling waiting to happen. Also, when Grambo was house sitting, he did give me a list of things general like maintenance things that I need to get done in this house. Um, one of which on the list, most of them, everything on the list that he sent me, I was aware of and I'm like, I already know that I need to get those things sorted. But there was one thing on the list that he, that was new that I didn't know about. And I feel like I have to go and check and I have checked and oh my word. He said some knobhead has knocked over an award, which is my, BBC Radio 1 Teen Awards 2015 Best British Vlogger Award. How many people can claim they've got those? I think the only people that actually have these, I think Zoe, I think KSI, Dan and Phil, and me, I feel like. Maybe there's more, there probably is more. Apologies if you also won one of these. Um, I don't know if they still do it anymore, but he said some knobhead has knocked this award over and left a dent in the wall, which definitely wasn't there before, so. Rambo, you need to come back round with some polyfiller or whatever people use to, to fix that kind of thing. Ah, the gym, the iron fortress, the iron dojo. This gym it needs to be used more this year than it was last year. Admittedly, I don't think I got this put in until like when, October, I think it was. Um, but already since being home, I've been well and truly using it. Although I haven't been using this big old thing as much. I've been doing more, um, whacking on a YouTube video of somebody doing like a barbell, um, somebody doing a dumbbell workout or a kettlebell workout and just following it along with these, which I've kind of preferred. Although down here, I did also get a weighted vest, which very much looks like a bulletproof vest, but I got one of these just to genuinely put on whilst I'm doing my workouts, just to add a bit of extra weight. But last time I wore that, I ended up doing my neck in again, which is becoming the bane of my life, or as they say, a pain in the neck. But also something on my list of things to do this year and get done this year is to sort out the acoustics in some of these rooms because it's quite a high ceiling room. Although the gym is now basically complete and I have sort of all the gym equipment that I need, more than I need. It's still very echoey in here. Even the door closed, it's a bit echoey. Now I've been looking into it. I've been watching other people's videos and things like that of like uh, doing up rooms and things like that. And a lot of them, something that they use is this um, like slats, you know, the wooden slats, but they're like acoustic wooden slats that you stick to the walls. And one, it makes the room look a lot cooler, I think, um, but also eliminates this echoiness which I think is what I want, because then when you play music, it just sounds better. Um, I just think an echo is, is not great. So I wanna get slats, wooden slats in here, and also in the office. I'm thinking like down here, down there, and maybe even in this entire wall here, just to 
improve the audio. It's not as bad in here as the gym, but obviously if I'm gonna stream, which I am desperate to get back into, and record and recording gaming content, I'm gonna need good audio acoustics in this room. Also, I'm very glad that I don't have to worry about showing this anymore. For the longest time, I had to always crop out or crop around because we filmed Portrait Artist of the Year quite a while ago. And this came in the move with us, but it was always in my office. The amount of times I'm about to upload a video and go, oh, I'm gonna have to cut this out because I didn't want to reveal which one I picked before the show went out. I'm sure no one would have noticed anyway, but it's the little things like that that, that, that I do pick up on. She's got the goods. She comes back home and she brings fish and chips. And I got oh. fish and chips. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> are you getting that heel roid out your shoe? <laughs> no. Oh, do you know what? I have missed these fish and chips. I'm telling you. No, Australian was all right. It wasn't too bad. The fish and chips I had at the start of Vlogmas weren't great. These, however, oh, I've missed it. I have missed it. So bloody good. Oh that my God. Is just, it is the, massive. it's the best fish and chips. I'm telling you, but we're blessed. There's two very good ones. Like there's two decent ones, but I'm real. I don't know what oil they're using or what they use to make that, but it's the best. However, Diane, yours is looking bold. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> it's got no, um, it's got no um, bits on it. Diane goes the healthiest you can go at fish and chips, grilled fish and a side salad. I love it. Not hardly any chips. These chips will last us about a week, I reckon. I need a handful of chips and I'm good, right? I love these chips, but I only need like a handful and I'm good. I, there's some people out there, I know a lot of like my friends, who would eat all those chips themselves and a large cod. 100%. How? We haven't got any um, flights coming up anytime soon, have we? <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> it, it, you, you're, you're almost lost in it at the start. You're almost a bit like, nah. But I bet you're glad you stuck around now because it's actually quite good, isn't it? I like it. We're trying to work out if it's based on a true story or not. We think it might be based on a true story. So I'm gonna now have to try and Google it to find out. I can try it. Rockies! <laughs> come oh on, God. walkies, come on, let's go for a walk. <gasps> come on. Yeah, An early morning walk. Small. Diane's feet have either grown. No, they'll get in, you just gotta... I think these are mine. Diane's, basically Diane's too scared to get these on because she reckons there's ticks hiding inside that are gonna, then, are they yours? I don't these, know if they are yours. These look smaller, don't Try they? Try them. Try them. No, they look smaller again. No, I reckon they'll be fine. Try those. No, they all hurt my toes. Just what try Just these? try them. I think these That's are. the ones your mum, they're your mum's. Yeah, they're probably better. Go on then. Get uh, can you do that this thing is, you did? This is not a bush tucker trial, Dot. You can put a Wellington boot I on. I know, but ticks can give you disease. Dot, you want, ticks live in long grass, not in Wellington boots. Well, they could live in this. <gasps> what is that? What is that, for example? What? There's nothing, there's nothing in there. <laughs> That's not funny. Get your feet in. Is that right? Yep. Sure? Mm -hmm. Not gonna give you blisters? Oh, just have a good old look in there, look. Anything? Well, not that I can see. That's good. Okay. Yeah, yeah? happy with those? Yep. Good? Those ones I think will hurt more because they're quite small. Do you have gloves? No, I don't. I do. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. You're very prepared. Oh, they're mine. Oh. They're actually my gloves. Oh, from a, oh my god, they're my gloves from about six or seven years ago. Really? Yeah, because I've got the, the finger things on there so what, you can use you your phone. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, I have got gloves. The gold leaf gardening gloves. Although these are looking like they've seen, these have seen a fair few bramble in their time. We are well and truly carpering our DM, getting up at the crack of dawn and going for a walk. I feel like we've not gone for a walk together. No in like this out in the countryside probably like i feel like since we actually moved down here ages ago so it's quite nice although it is still it's one degree right now so it's freezing cold i'm gonna take down on a little walk the route i discovered quite a few weeks ago i've just got to try and remember which way it was we went hmm. i feel like if we keep going this way uh, Oh. Kissing gate. I had to teach Diane the laws of the countryside, one of which being you cut if you're walking together and you go for one of those gates, it's called a kissing gate. You've got to you've got to um kiss the person you're walking through the gates with. 
It's always a bit awkward when you're going for a walk with like your mum. Yeah, or like a fam family member. <laughs> the rules don't Go apply. On, Zoe. The rules don't apply then, even though I am from the West Country. The rules don't apply. Come on, Zoe's boat. <laughs> but do you know what? I've I've actually missed this. Diane coming home and asking the most stupidest questions in the world. I'm trying to work out which route we went down last time. A really good route to walk. That takes us to the big hill. Uh, and Diane goes, can't you just like lick your finger and put it in the air? I'm what? Sure, to I've work out it. which direction we need yes, to walk I've in? I've seen it on movies. No, that's the test of wind direction, isn't it? You got that and so go... you don't even know. No, they got that and go, yeah, the wind's coming from that way. Yeah, so is it? No, you've got me, no, you've got me it, doubting myself now. So therefore it will determine which way you should walk. No, because why would you follow the wind? Wouldn't you know if it's northeasterly or something? I, I, I don't know. You're, you're hurting my brain. I think... You're making me... You'll, I think you'll find that actually it's a good test of where to go. Right, you go first. Which way? <laughs> Not a great tip. Hang on. <laughs> oh, I can see the dribble on your finger. <laughs> well... The coldness hits here first, go to the right. Yeah, I think we have to go right anyway. Do you? But you got to, this last time I was here, this is all flooded. But you can go first. Are you gonna walk through the water? Oh hello. It's like a pick your own adventure. Does she choose the bridge or does she choose the oh she's going for the water? Oh, water. <gasps> Duh. My welly boots aren't that. I would love it if you lost a boot. Try for sea snakes, as Mark would say. Oh, she's done it. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> she'd have slipped, she'd have slipped, she'd have slipped. <laughs> she's decided against it. Oh, oh, hey. Proud of you. Ooh. Some good skimmers in here. Now this is lose your boot territory. My God. Oh, That's so satisfying. Oh no. Is she gonna lose the boot? <laughs> You should have gone for the big ones, the big tall boots. Ooh. Real nice. Oh my gosh. Right, onwards, straight ahead. You want to do a quick cold plunge? Oh, why? <laughs> quick cold plunge, why not? That's perfect, that's basically what a cold plunge is, right? Yeah, it is. Someone's had some Nesquik cereal here as well. Want to there? Yeah. We have basically reached the summit of the hill. But also, can someone please explain to me why on some hills in the UK, they have like hundreds of nipples, like hill nipples. Like, look, look. And my OCD of pimpling popping. Yeah, Diane right now is like, all I want to do is just pop all these. But look, why, why is there just so many like little, just bumps? If they in were, the, look at them. Pimples, right, look. Like job for someone that like their job had to be to come and squeeze all the pus out. I would give up dancing. <laughs> Diane's, Diane's going for a career change. Diane's next job. Oh, there it goes. Damn it. Look at that. Is it a kite or a buzzard? I'm not too sure what that is. Once again, comments below. Enjoy. I hope you catch mice and rabbits or whatever you eat. Red-headed dancers. Ah! The amount of times on this walk, Diane said. I have no idea where we are. <laughs> Yeah, I to feel be honest, like we're walking to Brighton. This how week. do you not know where we are? We are Wait, clearly. Um, we are... Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, what's it saying? We're going the right way. Good, thank God for that. We are clearly in the Microsoft uh, screensaver. <laughs> oh my God, we are. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm on about, I'll put it on the screen now. That's essentially where we are. I feel like long walk though. I've really, I've not gone easy on us at all. I give us a really difficult route. We were saying like in the future, this is the perfect place to, oh, to choke on your own spit. <laughs> this is the perfect place to go skiing. Skiing? Sledging when it next snows because it's a perfect slope down a hill, but then it has like a bit at the end where you can, it'll stop you from going to the woods. 
Huh? There's seagulls down there. Yeah. Why are they not in the sea? They don't have to always be in the sea. Really? No. Are you all right? I've never seen a seagull. You need, to, you need to spend more time at home, I feel like. I've never seen a seagull in this area, like in, the, in like this bit. Dot, they literally sit on our roof sometimes. Seagulls? Yes. <laughs> yes. Friday night. Only on a Friday night, yeah. When we have fish and chips. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to race? Oh, yeah. Can we, can we? <laughs> no, because I'm worried you'll hurt yourself. Because there's little potholes and stuff. Oh, yeah. Never knew you'd fall. Break your ankle, hill, really. and then that'll be the end of. All right, Two, fair enough. Go. Oh, or I'm gonna fall. Whee! I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. Do you know what that reminded me of? Last night when we watched that movie, when the plane. Oh yeah, I forgot stopped. to mention what movie it was. It what was, was called. called? Society of Snow or something like that. I think Society of Snow, a true story of a Uruguayan rugby team that were in a plane crash in the 1972 landed in, in the, the and, <laughs> and, and it landed in a like a kind of like an area like this, but in the Andes um, and they weren't found for like 60 something days in freezing cold snow. Um, and it's, it's not a spoiler alert because it's it's an event that's already happened. 16 people survived from this flight, um, but they had to survive avalanches. They had to um, eat other passengers oh that were already God, dead. Yeah, that was a really. Oh, hard... where'd you get coffee from? Well, I'm, you find not, that? I'm not quite sure on this lid. Hmm. How on earth, right, is your sock? That one's actually not too bad. The other one is so filthy. Yeah, this one's actually alright. You've got more mud in your on your sock in that boot than you have. On the outside of your wounds and boot. How is that even possible? I oh, know. Oh, Doc, quick. We've got to move. Why? Jogger. He's chasing us. Oh, no. Let's go. 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 Right. Oh. Our morning walk is over. And there has been some wizardry done to this carpet. Um, I love this little diamond shape style thing going on here. Coke can go up there because it's time for a shower. And then heading off to Brighton to do some... What are we actually going to Brighton for? Just have a little look, don't we? We're just going for a little mooch, is that what they call it? Arrived in Brighton and we've been sidetracked massively by this. There's an art exhibition on. And I feel like this is what this is what you'd be well into, yeah, isn't it? This is really cool. Diane had our way, this is how our walls would look, I feel like. Right, thought you're picking one to take home with you. What are you picking? I would actually pick this. Neon. Oh, the big neon. Yeah. That is very cool. Although well, the camera's not enjoying it because it's flickering, but yeah, that is very, I very really cool. Like From our inside to our to outside. outside. We were just saying about how Diamond said about how. It's so cool in Brighton, like all the artwork. Yeah. And you get very really, artsy I get place. quite inspired when I come here. Yeah, it's nice to come for a walk around Brighton. I just like the fact that there's so many artsy people and. Quirky, it's quite quirky, isn't it? Yeah, Brighton. I do like it. Quirk. Speaking of, we're about to head into a thrifty sort of shop. We haven't been um, in a while, have we? We haven't actually been for a little shop together. We've not bought anything yet, which is good. No. But that could all change. So, I do need to get, oh, I did tell I one thing I do need to get mm. placemats for our diamond table. We've ended up in an Aladdin's cave of drinklets and stuff. Mm. And I've just seen this. Is that? Prawns inside an avocado. Yeah. Look. Oh my god, what the hell is that? That's nightmare fuel. That is mad. Oh, she's found the secret. Yeah, I have. But oh. I, I can't remember whether I've got that. You've got about 14 of them at home. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you see it, you go for a little phase where you're like, oh, I think I'm going to read this. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Pit stop at Gaw. What's it called? Gaw. Gourmet. Gourmet. Kimchi as well. Oh, we've got kimchi. We've come to a basically come to a ramen restaurant to get some ramen before we head back home. It's a perfect thing for this kind of weather. And there's a lot of different options. Diane's gone for the kimchi. I'm in my element. Is it good? But it's so good, but I would love for you to try it. What is it? Fermented cabbage. Fermented cabbage, you say? Uh -huh. Give me a tiny little bit. Mm. 
Cool. Yeah, it's spicy. Nice though, isn't it? Yep. Uh. It's nice to find these little tiny places. Gems. Yeah. We actually walked past it. Uh, we did, we walked past it at first. We turned around, came back, but also, remember in yesterday's vlog, I was saying about how I want some acoustic paneling for the house. That's the stuff I mean. It's basically this stuff here. Although, I'm seeing it an awful lot everywhere I go. Almost too much. Is it too much? Like, can you imagine that in our house? In the gym? I think the gym would look good. In the gym and in my office. She loved it so much, she even like drank out of the bowl at the I end. Like this. Uh, what are you rating that out of 10? That's definitely up there with one of the best kimchi I've ever had. Really? Yeah. Ooh. I need your opinion. Diane, when she's edamame, she strips it like that. Whereas me, I always thought you just eat just a bean and that's it. But Diane eats the actual skin of it. I think you're probably more right than me. Because for a long time after, I feel the scratchy bits in my throat. Yeah, but also, how does your stomach digest that? It's like a thick skin. Like, is, that not, is that not normal? Yeah, that's how I do it. But Diane literally like shreds it off the thing. <laughs> oh, and here we go. The chicken misu ramen. And what do you go for? I went for the soya ramen. Ooh, give it a little go. Soya milk ramen. Well, that was delicious. Well, it may have scaffolding outside of it, but Goman Ramen Bar, right there, opposite the spice shop and everywhere else in the lanes, in the north lanes, I think. Highly recommended. I also recommend getting out the freezing cold, but also picking up a Joe and the Juice, because I am, in fact, a Joe Ambassador. Joe and the Juice Ambassador. So, um, so whenever we're near a Joe and the Juice, I, I have to pick up some little bits and bobs. And today, like every other day that I go there, is of course, without spilling it, it's the Power Shake. The pink Power Shake. And do you want to know my order? Tea. That is the best tea I've ever had in my life. It's from Joe and the Juice. And I get a, um, <coughs> sorry about that one. <coughs> a, um, Rubo's tea. <laughs> oh, Rubo's. With oat milk. And it's so uh, and we also got some little picky bits, some little puddings from Joe and the Juice, like little raw bars that they do. But let's start her engines. Let's not be fooled by the rocks that she's got. And most importantly, <laughs> heated steering wheel, because my hands are going a little bit Reynardy. Gladiators! <laughs> you remember Gladiators, didn't you? Well, you used to have it in Australia. What do you call it? Gladiators. <laughs> gladiators. Okay, if we could go gladiators, but are you ready? This was the best. This it's is the so eliminator. Good. I love this one. Remember the running bit at the end? At the end, when I had to run, run up the, the Yeah. Bit. I used to play it on slides at school. Yeah, see, this is, this is bringing it this all back. Iconic. A lot of repeats on TV nowadays, but it's nice to have things back like this sometimes i do think this still holds up today there's other shows like ninja warrior and the physical 100 on netflix but i think early peak early saturday night tv needs shows like this back again it's got it's got me back watching it anyway and i've really enjoyed it oh yeah Oosh. was that the first episode we were, then yeah for, we we're just saying how fun would it be to actually have a go on that i'd love to if they ever do a celebrity, celebrity if they do a celebrity special, hold us up. <laughs> Diane will be right there. I'll go with my big mouth guard on. Right, Joe, you will go on my first whistle. Diane, you will go on my second whistle. Shh. Shh. <laughs> there we go. What? The joke's on you, Doc, because I got there first, so I win an ice cream. <gasps> oh my god. Who remembers this from like. 8,000 vlogs ago, freeze and squeeze slush. Rest at room temperature for 25 minutes. Crush the slush, remove cap and enjoy. We're actually gonna try this tonight. Oh shit. Remove cap and enjoy. Yeah, but how do I enjoy if I can't? Tell you what, that is very good. I really didn't wanna like this, but when I figure out how to get it out, 
I, it tastes it tastes really good. Although on the back, we're just looking at actually what's in it because Dan was like, sure, it's full of sugar. Sugars, 1.3 grams per 100 ml, 3.1 grams per 250 ml serving, which is what this is. That's actually not too bad. But Dan was like, no, nah, it must have, what is it? Like fake stuff. Like fake sugars, sweeteners. It's got a sweetener. Mm. But it says down here, excessive consumption in short time periods may cause adverse health effects in young children. Like, what? What's an adverse health effect? Like, it may cause, like, health effects in young children if they keep eating it in, sh in short spaces of time. Well, yeah, of course. Are they just trying to say it's gonna give, it might give you a brain freeze? If you try and down this in one, you're going to get a brain freeze, without a doubt. Maybe that's what it is. But why, why for young children not... Um, I wonder what... Joe Suggs. Did anyone else think Tony Hadley is what Ollie White's gonna look like in about, well, in about maybe 20 years time, 30 years time? Cause I do. <laughs> that to me, it reminds me of like an older Ollie White. It's not a bad thing. Tony Hadley is a legend and a very handsome chap for his age, but that is Ollie White in the future. I'm calling it. But now it's time for tonight's main viewing of the evening. What are we watching? She doesn't know. We are watching a film that everyone's been talking about at the moment um, on Amazon called Salt Burn. Um, I've heard various things about this. I've seen a lot of memes and TikTok trends and stuff about this film. Um, but it thought it'd be quite interesting for us to watch. Apparently it's not one to watch with your parents. Um, so we should be fine, but we'll give our review, or more importantly, Diane will give her review after. Thoughts? Um, it was very odd. <laughs> it was a good movie, just very weird. Yeah, it was. It was very, very odd. I, I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was gonna be a movie about, remember the old salt and ice challenge from back in the day on YouTube? Where you put some salt in your hand and you held onto an ice cube as long as you could. No. And you got salt burn. Oh, really? I thought it was gonna be that. It turns out, those days are over. It wasn't about that. It was about. It was. It was. I. I didn't. I didn't not like it. I feel like I need to sort of. I want to know like the deeper meat. There's, there's definitely a deeper meaning to the film or something. You reckon? I reckon it's pretty self-explanatory. Do you reckon? I think that uh, more Can about I like. Say there was one moment that I actually knew more than Joe. Yeah, there was. There was one moment. That I was like, you did you not recognise what happened? Yeah. And Joe was like, really. But uh, yeah, I knew it before it even. There was a lot. There was. There's a fair. But it's a pre-warning. There's a fair bit of todger in there, um, <laughs> uncensored todge in this movie. <laughs> I, I I did really enjoy it. The way it's shot as well. I loved. I loved the sort of um, the art style of it. Um, I I did like it. Yeah. I liked good. it. Seven point nine out of ten. I'll give it. Yeah, I'd probably give it that as well. Yeah. Hello, me, back again. Um, I also didn't end the vlog, so I am doing so now. So thank you very, very much for watching. If you made it this far into the vlog, uh, I think it's like a 30 minute vlog. So um, thanks. Hopefully uh, you've enjoyed it. I hope you had a wonderful weekend as well and a lovely Sunday. If you enjoyed the vlog, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the little notification bell and all those kinds of things. And I will see you again, hopefully very, very soon with another vlog. But remember, I'm no longer a daily vlogmaster, daily vlogger.